Hey, my name is Nick from State of Woods Co. and Phantom CNC Dealer. In this video, I want to dive into what these pneumatic rollers are on all of our Phantom CNC machines. The one thing that we get questioned a lot and the one thing that you really notice on a Phantom CNC that stands out from everybody else in the market are these pneumatic rollers. We are going to be one of the only companies that have these pneumatic rollers standard on all of our CNC machines. When it comes to CNC's, the one thing that a lot of people have a problem with doing is actually securing their work pieces down tight to the table. It's called CNC hold down options. And what we have done with Phantom CNC's is we've added an automatic CNC hold down option to go along with all the other traditional types of hold downs. These rollers are designed really for sheet goods. Any type of sheet or flat type of item that you're putting on your table that you want to make sure is tight down to the table. A lot of times nowadays when I'm purchasing plywood, we're getting plywood that has a little bit of a warpage into it. And there's nothing really that we can do about it. Vacuum can only go so far. Traditional hold down options can only go so far by holding things in place laterally from moving. Well, the rollers are intended to push that downward force on top of your material so that you know that your Z height cuts are going to be exactly accurate every single time. These rollers are controlled by compressed air. They're all fully pneumatic. And what that means is that you'll need an air compressor hooked to the unit to be able to control these rollers from going up and down. All of our CNC's are going to require compressed air to run the pneumatics or to run the auto tool change units if that's what you have. You're going to be able to use any type of traditional airline that you already have in your shop or you can get a dedicated one. And we'll go into the requirements on the air in here in just a moment. But what you're going to do is you're going to plug it right into the regulator on the front or the back of your machine depending on what unit you have. Once you plug it in you'll see that your rollers typically oh, go ahead and raise. The regulators are going to be set for around 60 psi so don't worry if you're bringing 90 or 100 psi into your machine. The regulator is going to control it all from right here. You are going to be able to control the air going into your rollers and the pressure that they apply so you can adjust it down from 60 and lower it to a setting that you feel like you need. With the regulator being set to 60 psi, you can think of it as 600 pounds of downward force are going to be on each piston of the rollers. So 600 pounds of downward force here on this roller and this one. If you regulate it down to 40 psi, you're going to be regulated down to about 400 pounds of pressure on each roller. Now to ensure that you have really good dry air, what I recommend is having a shutoff valve before your machine so that at the end of the day, all you have to do is turn off the air to your unit. These rollers have relief valves on them, so they're constantly going to be leaking a small amount of air as that relief. So with your unit off, even if you have air connected to it after hours, you're still going to have a little bit of air leak. That's going to cause your compressor to continue to run and maybe can cause some condensation in your lines. Now the machines do come with air water separators already built in, but it's our suggestion to have one already put into your shop somewhere between your air compressor and any of your units. This is also going to come in handy if you're running any type of pneumatic nail guns or paint sprayers or anything like that that's requiring compressed air. Dry air is always the best air. My recommendation on actual tank size is 30 gallons or larger, just so that you can control the amount of time that this air compressor is actually running. Now on our machines you're going to see two different types of versions of pneumatic rollers. You're going to have a manual setup like you see on our S and Shadow series machines. This is going to be controlled by a manual lever on the front of the machine. It's going to either control rollers up or rollers down. The other type of roller that you're going to find on our units are the automatic rollers on our big T series and Reaper series machines as well as all of our 4x4s. This means that the machine controls the position at which the rollers go up and down automatically. And this is extremely important when you have an auto tool change unit. The roller has to be able to rise up above the tool changer when it's going to go do a change. Now these positions are set at the factory and we do it for a couple of specific reasons, especially on these machines with the auto tool change units. You really don't want to change the positions at which those rollers go up and down because it may hinder or hurt your tool change bar in the back of the machine. These automatic rollers are designed to make sure that there is one roller making contact with your work surface at all times. So if it rolls to the front of the machine, instead of falling off the front, it's going to raise up, but the back roller is going to be stationary on your workpiece as that hold down option. The rollers were specifically designed for sheet goods, and really, to be honest with you, these rollers were really designed for the boating industry, EVA foam. It's very hard to keep the EVA foam tight down to the table and vacuum doesn't work very well with it. So these rollers were actually put on 
to aid the marine industry holding down that EVA foam. Now, if you don't want to use sheet goods or your slab flattening or you're doing small projects on the table and you don't need the rollers, you can remove them very easily. There's just a simple Allen key on each end of the rollers, lift them up, take them off. If you want to take the brackets off, the brackets are typically threaded. So you'll just take the rollers off, unthread the brackets and remove them if you don't want to. If you want to simply just raise your rollers out of the way on any of the automatic tool changer units, you can control it by the K1 and K2 on the handheld devices, or you simply do the same thing over on the standalone controller cabinets by hitting the K3 button. I can't stress enough how valuable the rollers are for CNC machines, especially if you're doing sheet goods. For my personal business, it has extremely changed the way we price and quote projects and how many sheets we can get out at a given time with a lot less waste. So these are extremely, extremely valuable. And knowing when to use them and when not to use them is very important. And you'll learn that as you go through your learning process with the CNC's. So I hope this video really helped you. And until next time, have fun with your CNC.